Okay, so good day everybody. So welcome to our discussion for today. So our discussion on hematology too will be starting on an introduction to hemostasis. Again, good morning to everybody. And I hope everybody has their product with them right now. So as for your um, reading assignment, okay, reading assignment, or you can just simply follow along what I'm discussing, will be your Rodox Hematology 2020, the sixth edition. So please turn to chapter 35 and let us talk about normal hemostasis. Specifically, uh, the one that I'll be discussing for today is found on pages 626 to 627, specifically the overview to hemos thesis. So last time during our orientation, okay, last time during our orientation, I already gave you an overview of the hemostasis. So we said that hemostasis is very important because um, it preserves your blood in its proper compartment at a proper phase at the uh, at a, a proper phase at the right time. So I always tell you that the blood should be in liquid form or the blood should coagulate, okay? The blood should coagulate at the perfect time, at the perfect place, and for the right purpose. So for this particular discussion um, on your screen right now, so we're going to talk about hemostasis. So when we talk about hemostasis, um, in general, this is the process in which um, it is the process in which the blood is retained uh, within the vascular system during a um, period of injury or it localizes the reaction involved to the site of injury alone and it will not be a systemic uh, bleeding. So remember, that, take for example, you have your wound. Okay, you have your wound. So we want as much as possible to localize the bleeding on that part so that it can be addressed immediately. It can be uh, stopped immediately by our body. Okay, but always remember, okay, always remember that hemostasis doesn't just only um, is concerned when it comes to our blood being in its liquid form when it is within our blood vessel, but it is also um, responsible in maintaining coagulation once the blood escapes from your blood vessel. And at the same time, just like what I told you last time, um, it, our goal, ultimate goal, is to stop the bleeding, to address the injury, and also for tissue repair to happen. And after that, we can now reestablish the blood flow. But before that happens, fibrinolysis should take place first. Okay? So your, your hemostasis is a system Okay, a system that is very much um, important to be maintained within our blood. That's why we call it hemostasis. So as you all know, your blood, your only liquid coagul uh, connective tissue, when inside the blood, there should, no, there should not be any coagulation. So it should remain, remain fluid. It should be uh, liquid in its state. Uh, when inside our blood vessel. This is for blood flow to happen, the treat be delivered, your oxygen be delivered all across your tissue. And at the same time, when now your blood is outside your blood vessel, when or when uh, does your blood escape from your blood vessel? This is during injury. Okay, this is during injury or during um, tissue damage whereby there is an involvement of your blood vessel. So once that your blood uh, is outside the blood vessel, it needs to coagulate, okay? It needs to coagulate. So there, here is the time now where your hemotactic reaction happens. All of your coagulation factors, both um, all the components of your primary and secondary hemostasis, which we are going to talk about in a short while, will all be involved, okay? So that is the normal state. Your blood being liquid when inside your blood vessel and when outside the blood vessel, it should be coagulating, okay? So to prevent further loss of blood. Now, the problem is that um, there are some hemo, uh, hemo, uh, hemostasis abnormality, okay? Abnormal mechanism inside our body that may cause the opposite of what I just mentioned to you a while back. So... What happened is that what happened when 
your blood is inside your blood vessel and it coagulates then that's the problem now because it would lead to thrombosis diseases okay thrombosis diseases so the result of excessive clot formation inside your blood vessel or persistence of clot inside your, your blood vessel can lead to thrombosis so they can occlude their the, your blood vessel therefore your oxygen cannot pass through your nutrients cannot pass through that organ or that particular part of your body would be deprived um, of the triads and it would eventually be damaged or it can even lead to cell death. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, if your blood demand, okay, if your blood demand um, is outside your blood and there's also abnormal mechanism, so sabi natin, dapat pag, if it is already outside the blood, then it should be coagulating. But the problem is, if that didn't happen, okay, there is no coagulation that happened, bleeding will persist. Or what we call now, these are your hemorrhagic diseases. So the problem here, this time, is that when there are um, any uh, procoagulant, meaning to say proteins that favor the coagulation of our blood, like your coagulation factors. If there are procoagulants that are missing, deficient in, in, a, in a particular individual, then okay, what will happen is that there would be an uncontrolled bleeding. So your patient will just bleed and bleed all throughout. There will be severe blood loss and there will be hemorrhage that will also lead to death. So in a nutshell, it's very important that our blood should be maintained in its liquid form inside the blood vessel. And when the blood escapes from your blood vessel, it should be coagulating. So this particular mechanism is very much uh, maintained tediously inside our body. So at the very moment, uh, at the very moment that your, your blood escape, a lot of your uh, proteins will also already be released to favor coagulation but at the same time there are also inhibitors that will be secreted so to ensure that your blood your blood okay will not be coagulating excessively there will not be um thrombus formation or clot formation anywhere in your body again always remember the clot should happen at the right time at the right place and at the right uh for the right purpose okay so in addition to that now, okay, when we talk about hemostasis, it's not just a job of your, uh, it's not just the job of your platelets. Although platelet is one key player, but platelet is not alone. So for us to be able to understand how hemostasis happens, we will also be talking about today the different key components of hemostasis, which are as follow. So there are two uh, general classification of the different components of um, hemostasis. First are the cellular components and second are the plasma components. So when we talk about cellular components, these are now the cells of your vascular intima. To be more specific, these are your endothelial cells. Okay, This will be part of our discussion in the coming weeks when we will be talking about your vascular intima. Next, we also have your vascular tissue factor-bearing cells. So very simple, any, all of your tissue cells okay, that, um, that can produce or that contains your tissue factor is included here. Okay? So they secrete um, a very important coagulation factor, coagulation factor 3, which is your tissue factor. So, um, also favoring your coagulation. And of course, um, last but definitely not the least, we have your platelets. Your platelets being uh, one of the key cellular components for your hemostasis. As for the plasma components, we also have your coagulation proteins. Your coagulation proteins, these are the proteins that favors coagulation. Okay? Uh, you can also read this in your RODAC as procoagulant. Okay? Your procoagulants. Or in, um, in other words, they are also called your pro your coagulation proteins. Meaning to say, once that they are present and activated inside your body, they will favor coagulation. On the other end, we also have your fibrinolytic protein. So remember, I told you last time that when it comes to fibrinolytic proteins, these are proteins now that will elicit or that will trigger the 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 uh, that will trigger the lysis 
okay or that will uh, that will hasten the the uh, the clot to be dissolved inside your body okay so once that the, the tissue repair is on its way okay so the the blood the clot now the clot that has been formed will now have to be lysed or now have to be destroyed and be cleared out of your blood vessel how that is through the help of your fibrinolytic proteins now aside from coagulation proteins and fibrinolytic proteins coagulation one that promotes coagulation fibrinolytic the one that uh, the group of proteins that will lyse okay or destroy now or dissolve your clot we also have your inhibitors inhibitors now are the one that inhibits your coagulation proteins okay like take for example there is um there is a there is um, a bystander um clot formation inside your blood vessel there is no need for clot formation to happen but it happened so your inhibitors now will prevent that coagulation from further uh, developing into a clot okay into a stabilized clot on the other end you also have your inhibitors for your fibrinolytic proteins uh, what is the purpose of the uh, these inhibitors, the inhibitors of your fibrinolytic protein. So remember, uh, fibrinolytic proteins should only be activated once that tissue repair is about to happen. That is to clear out the, the clot, that is to clear out the passage of the blood. And kung hindi pa tapos, if the repair is not yet done, if the, the, blood, is, the blood vessel is still healing, it should, the clot should remain there. Okay? So wag mo, do not remove the clot if it's not yet time. Okay? So it's like removing a particular... Take for example, you're baking cake in the oven and then you remove it uh, under time. Okay? You, you did not wait for 30 minutes. You just remove it after 5 minutes. Of course, that will not, uh, that is uncooked. Okay, that is uncooked. So, for you be, to be able to inhibit, for your, you to um, ensure, okay, that it will be cooked, you have to put some inhibitor. Like, take for example, uh, the oven cannot be open not until the timer is done. Okay, so inside our body, it's also very similar. We have inhibitors that will prevent fibrinolytic protein from destroying the clot if it's not yet time to be destroyed. Okay, so these mechanisms happen inside our body in a very um, close and tedious manner, so that it the so that we will be able to prevent. Okay, we will be able to prevent the. Uh, we will be able to prevent our. Um, we will be able to prevent our um, clot from being destroyed unknowingly, and uh, we'll be able to uh, prevent it. Okay, from being destroyed na walang uh, na walang um, na wala pang tissue repair na nangyayari. Okay, excuse me. Okay, so apologies for that quick um, um, commercial. Okay, so now um, aside from your the components of your hemostasis being classified as cellular and uh, cellular components and plasma components, we can further classify them according to where they belong. So some belong to your primary hemostasis, some belong to your secondary hemostasis, and now your fibrinolysis. So these are the processes of your hemostasis. So let's first talk about your primary hemostasis. So when we talk about primary hemostasis, okay, so primary hemostasis are usually, is usually activated by small injuries to blood vessel. So primary hemostasis is very rapid yet short-lived response. So this is just like a first aid um, scenario inside our body. So it is very rapid. Uh, once there is um, a small injury in the blood vessel, it is the first um uh, first one to be activated, okay, first one to be activated, but it is short-lived. So what are the components of your primary hemostasis? So the components are your vascular system. So vascular system starting off 
from the smallest the smallest blood vessel that we have what which are your what which are your capillaries also no also uh, included here are your arteries and of course your your veins as well so one important thing that i want you guys to remember is that the main um, component responsible for the primary hemostasis, specifically uh, for your vascular system, are your vascular intima, okay? Your vascular intima or your endothelium or as product want to call it, your endothelial cells, okay? So when we say endothelial cell, endothelium, and vascular intima, which is the innermost layer of your blood vessel, vascular intima, which are all made up of your, which are all made up of your endothelium, okay? That is the component that is part of your primary hemostasis. At the same time, you, you also, uh, we, we also are include your platelets, okay? We also include your platelets. So let's have a quick quento how does it happen. So take for example, how does your primary hemostasis happen? So as you all know, once there is a small injury, um, the vascular system would contract to seal the wound. And that is the initial hemotactic response. That is your vasoconstriction. So remember that, uh, remember that people, uh, the, the initial hemotac hemostat hemostatic and the initial hemostatic response okay the initial hemostatic response of our body specifically our vascular system is your vasoconstriction vasoconstriction helps so that we can seal the wound we can prevent uh we can seal the wound and prevent the what prevent um, further or excessive loss of blood but that will not be enough why because we also need to have your platelet plug so your platelet plug okay your platelet plug is of course made up of your platelet that fill the open space of your wound so that is to form your platelet plug so remember that the innermost vascular lining of your blood vessel your vascular intima are lined by your endothelial cells so aside from your endothelial cells, you also have your supporting, uh, supporting, uh, supporting, uh, structures for your endothelial cells like your internal elastic lamina, your elastin, and your collagen. Which in return, once exposed, uh, once your platelets are exposed to elastin and collagen, they will be activated. Okay, once they are activated, they will adhere. Okay, they will adhere now to the, um. To the site of injury so as you can see here okay as you can see here um your platelets now started to adhere to the wound okay or to the blood vessel wall um aside from that i also want you guys to remember that on your sub endothelial uh remember that your blood vessel has layers right uh your vascu uh, vascular your your adventitia diba? your adventitia the outermost layer of your of your blood vessel Okay, and the innermost uh, layer of your blood vessel also interacts. So you have your subendothelial connective tissue, uh, containing your collagen, your fibroblasts, okay, and also smooth muscle and your artery. If there, these are your arteries. If it's just your your veins, these are only your collagen and fibroblasts. Sir, why is your fibroblast important? Your fibroblast is important when it comes to the uh, repair part of your blood vessel. So they are the one that will produce new set of cells that will um, close the blood vessel. Okay? But to um, to summarize everything that I just mentioned about primary hemostasis, simple. What Once that there is okay, a small injury in the blood vessel, a rapid and a short response called your primary hemostasis will take place. Again, the key player of this are your vascular system and your platelet. How does they prevent your bleeding? They prevent bleeding by first um, sealing okay, the wound. How do they seal the wound? By um, the initial hemostatic uh, response, which is your vasoconstriction. And afterwards, platelet now will fill in the gap or will fill in now the open space coming from your wound, producing a platelet plug. And your platelet plug, in other books, you can read it as your primary hemostatic plug. Okay? Your primary hemostatic plug. Your primary hemostatic plug, ladies and gentlemen, are mainly made up of your 
platelets alone. Okay? Let me repeat that. It is only your platelet. Why? Because we are still in the primary hemostasis. So, meaning, sir, there is um a more advanced or a better, a more advanced or a secondary uh, response after your primary Yes, that's very correct. Your primary hemostasis is the first aid. It is the first thing that would happen, followed by your secondary hemostasis. Secondary hemostasis will now be activated once that the primary hemostasis response is not enough. How would that be? Or when are the times that it's going to happen? <laughs> first, when... um. Your secondary hemostasis will be activated by a large injury, uh, large injuries to your blood vessel. Like for example, there is really a big wound. Okay, your blood vessel will, was cut, so lots of blood will be coming out, or will be uh, lots of blood will be uh, will escape your blood vessel. So. When it comes to your secondary hemostasis, this is activated again by a large injury of your blood vessels. This is a delayed response, okay? But the good thing about this is that it is a long-term response, okay? It is a long-term response. So the following components of your secondary hemostasis are as follow. So components are your coagulation factors, your coagulation inhibitors. So your coagulation factors are those that promotes coagulation. We also call this your procoagulants. And your coagulation inhibitors, obviously, these are their inhibitors. So to prevent any unwanted clot formation inside your blood vessels, okay? So to prevent any uh, unwanted blood... Uh, to prevent any unwanted clot formation in the in the body, there are also coagulation inhibitors. Okay, Co coagulation inhibitors that are also found in your blood. So to prevent any unwanted coagulation. Okay, any coagulation. So with that, okay, uh, let's also talk about how does the secondary hemostasis happen. So the secondary hemostasis happens by the interaction of your coagulation factors so to produce fibrin clot, okay? Your fibrin clot, which is what we call now your secondary hemostatic clot. Remember that in the primary hemostasis, the, the end uh, product there will be a platelet plug, a platelet plug that will prevent okay, bleeding that is your primary hemostatic plug. And now for your secondary hemostasis, we have now the interaction of your coagulation factor. So uh, I'll park this. Um, I won't be discussing the coagulation factors yet because we will be discussing that around uh we'll be discussing that around uh around the fifth week before the fifth week of our discussion. And we will also be talking about the coagulation cascade. Okay, so it is a it is a pathway in which your proteins are activated um, simultaneously, um, one after the uh, one after the other one after the other to produce now your fibrin clot. Remember that your fibrin clot. Remember that your fibrin clot um uh, is from the activation of your uh, your factor one or your fibrinogen, fibrinogen becoming now your fibrin, okay? Your fibrinogen now becoming your fibrin. And the ultimate uh, protein, okay, or the ultimate enzyme that we want to produce there is your thrombin. Thrombin now will be the one to convert your fibrinogen to fibrin, making it now or producing now a fibrin clot. So as you can see, once that the secondary hemostatic plug happened, okay, it needs to be stabilized and it will be stabilized by your factor 13, which is your uh which is now your fibrin stabilization. So if you guys could see no if you guys could see your screen right now, initially, okay, initially, um once that there is a a damage here, okay, the first thing that will always happen will be your primary hemostasis. The first line of defense in your blood vessel is your endothelium or your vascular system and then your platelets. Once that it will not, once that 
their effort is stopped enough, that's the time that the secondary hemostasis will be activated. These are now your coagulation factor. Your coagulation factor will form your fibrin clot. The one that you see here, like a mesh surrounding the ano, surrounding the the blood vest, the the platelets, and the red blood cells. Okay, these are your this is your fibrin clot. But your fibrin clot needs to be further stabilized as to prevent it from breaking. Okay, that is now through the help of your factor 13. Okay, that is not with the help of your factor 13. You guys don't worry because we'll be, this is just an, an overview of hemostasis. Um, in the coming days after your megakaryocytopoiesis, we'll be discussing the components of your primary and your secondary hemostasis and talk about more about how they happen and what are the uh, other nitty-gritty details about these processes. And now, uh, finally, we also have your fibrinolysis. Now, in your fibrinolysis, remember that this is now the final stage of coagulation. Fibrinolysis will only happen once that <laughs> once that the wound is sealed, and now we are ready to repair the blood vessel. So this is the final stage of coagulation. So as you can see, there will now be thrombolysis. Thrombolysis or your fibrinolysis is one and the same. So as you can see, there are a lot of proteins okay there are a lot of proteins that will digest your fibrin clot so the the digestion of your fibrin clot keeps the vascular system free of deposited fibrin or fibrin clot why number one uh deposited fibrin and fibrin clot will clog your blood vessel okay barado ang ating blood vessel if the fibrin will not be removed Aside from that, fibrin and fib uh, fibrin and fibrin clot, okay, your fibrin or your fibrin clot can also cause, okay, can also cause uh, ay, ayun, nabanggit ko na, uh, deposition, okay, deposition inside, deposition of clot inside your body that will cause clogging, okay? So, your fibrinolysis occurs when your plasminogen is converted to plasmin. So plasminogen is a zymogen, meaning to say an inactive enzyme. So once that it is activated, okay, once that it is activated by your thrombin, it will now be converted to plasmin. Okay. So your plasmin will now be the one that will lyse your fibrin clot. Okay. It will lyse your fibrin clot. Remember. That is uh, the 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 cleaving or the digestion of your fibrin clot is very important. Okay, it's very important. So under normal circumstances, your plasminogen is just a part of is part of any clot. Okay, uh, so as to I know as because uh because of the tendency of your fibrin clot to absorb plasminogen from the plasma. So when the time is right, okay, when the time is right, when your plasminogen activators perform their function, your plasminogen now will be converted to plasmin and your plasmin now will start to clean up, will start to digest your clot while uh, leaving time for tissue repair to happen and re-establishing the blood flow, okay? Re-establishing the blood flow. So you, how does your fibrinolysis happen? So first, uh, release of tissue plasminogen activators and then the plasminogen will be converted to plasmin. Now your plasmin will degrade or digest your fibrin, converting them okay, to fibrin degradation products. Your fibrin degradation products, we'll be talking about that um, on the latter part of our hematology too. But um, hopefully uh, you understood the concept of hemostasis. So from primary hemostasis, so let's have a quick review lang, no? From primary hemostasis, okay? So in primary hemostasis, uh, what's the first thing that happens? Okay, the, the first thing that happens, if there are any uh, injury in your blood vessel, it will first, the initial hemostatic response, it will lead to what? It will lead to vasoconstriction. So after vasoconstriction, Okay, your uh, your platelets now will be exposed to your collagen and your elastin. It will attach to that, okay, and then it will now fill up the gap or the, the wound as to prevent uh, bleeding 
if that's not enough, your secondary hemostasis will be activated. And how it is activated, it is through the activation of your coagulation factors. Coagulation factors that will lead to the formation of your fibrin clot. Now, once your fibrin clot is produced, okay, once that your fibrin clot is produced, it will remain there for as long as it is needed. But let us assume that the task is already finished. We will now be entering the final stage of your coagulation, which is your fibrinolysis. And in your fibrinolysis, a protein called your plasminogen will be converted, will be activated to become your plasminogen, your plot to become your plasmin. And your plasmin will further convert your fibrin, okay, or your fibrin clot to their degradation products, okay, your fibrin degradation product, and will now establish re-establish your blood flow. So I prepared a BD, uh, a very very quick picture here. So as when there's injury, okay, there will be vasoconstriction, and at the same time, platelets, okay, will adhere to the wound, will fill up the gap. So that is primary hemostasis. If this one is not enough, okay, your, your coagulation factors, okay, your platelet plug will not be enough. Your plate, your coagulation factors will be activated forming now your fibrin clot. Okay, once that's finished, repair is on, is on its way. We need to reestablish the blood flow. Fibrinolysis now will happen. So remember guys, okay, remember guys, few things. Uh, you should be able to remember um, the three important uh, stages of hemostasis, your primary, secondary hemostasis, and your fibrinolysis. Second, what are the different cellular and plasma components belonging to your primary hemostasis, your secondary hemostasis, and your fibrinolysis. Finally, I also want you to remember what three things, okay, before we end this particular part of our discussion, what what is the initial um, hemostatic response that is vasoconstriction? Okay, second, what is the uh, primary, uh, what is the other name of your primary hemostatic plug? That is your platelet plug. Okay, that is your platelet plug. And finally, what do you call the secondary hemostatic plug? That is your fibrin clot. What stabilizes your fibrin clot? That is your activated factor 13. So I hope. Um, our discussion about hemostasis is clear. So again, the ultimate purpose of this is to maintain okay, the, the blood inside your blood vessel as fluid with no coagulation. If it is outside your blood already, it needs to coagulate. And of course, uh, let's also not forget your fibrinolysis. So again, um, let me remind everybody to please read on uh, pages 626 to 627, only the overview of hemostasis paragraph, okay? So with that, thank you so much for listening, everyone. So there is a second video right after this. We'll be talking about your uh, megacaryocytopoiesis. So I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much and have a great day.